joining you from my studio. Um, and today I want to uh, review a piece of equipment that I have. Uh, this is going to be my first product review. I hope you enjoy it. Um, it's I'm reviewing the my 1980 Fender 30 combo amplifier. I'm a big fan of combo amplifiers. I always loved them. Um, I like the old Fenders. I like some of the boutique amplifiers that mimic the Fenders. Um, and it just so happens that today I'm going to be reviewing the Fender 30. I know. What's a Fender 30? Most of you don't know what that is. Well, I can tell you that I didn't know what it was until I came upon it. And I got the opportunity to trade a guitar that just wasn't doing it for me anymore straight up for this, amp for this combo amp. And so I jumped at it. And uh, I don't know what I can say other than it's a 1980, so it's post Silver Faced, but it's pre Rivera era uh, Fender. It's 100% point to point, hand wired, one of the last ones that was done uh, before they started using predominantly circuit boards. This was made in California. Um, it's, it's a two channel switchable amplifier. Quite, quite a change from Fender, the Silver Face amps um, that I've ever played anyway. I'm sure somebody will tell me that there's some obscure one out there that I'm not aware of. That's possible. But anyway, this one is, uh, although it's got a black face on it, it really is more like a silver face. Um, it is all tube, including the rectifier, so that gives it a, it gives it a sound that um, makes me think of the old Fender Deluxes. Um, it gets a little bit of a response to the attack, a little bit. Um, it is, like I said, it's all tube. They offer them in a 212 or a 120, uh, I'm sorry, a 112 or a 210 version. I happen to have the 210, which I particularly like. That, that made it more attractive to me. Again, it's only made in 1980, 1981. It's a 30-watt amplifier. It's more than you would ever need anywhere, any gig you would play. And, and uh, so it's just really nice. Um, the one I have is pretty clean. It's, uh, you can tell it's not brand new, but it's pretty clean. I've cleaned it up and everything, and I've had it for about two and a half years, so I've gotten used to, to it. Um, it's got the two channels that are switchable, uh, are the normal channel, which is basically a, it has two inputs. It's got a volume and a treble and a bass, and it's got a bright switch on it, which is really nice for getting that Fender chimey uh, sound. Um, and then it's got this other channel called the reverb channel, which has a bunch of features. It has, well, on the reverb channel, it has two inputs, and it has a channel switch, uh, uh, slide switch which allows you to turn channel switching on or off. Um, it's got a preamp that has a pull boost on it. It's got a treble that has a pull boost on it. It's got a mid-range that has a pull boost on it. And it's got a bass that has a pull boost on it. And you can max those all out and get really heavy overdrive. And then it's got a master volume that can reduce the overall level of it so that you can play it at very tolerable, even bedroom level and still get quite a bit of edge. Um, and then it's got a reverb on it and the reverb is not one of those over-the-top heavy surf wild you know crazy effects that you see on some amplifiers. This one when you turn it all the way up it's nice and thick and lush and very very present but it's not overbearing and then you can tone it down from there which I really like because a lot of amps that I've had the reverb, you can only turn it up to about three or four and then it just gets out of hand. Um, so anyway, that's the front panel. And then it's got a standby switch and it's got a power switch and the jewel light that, you're, that we're all accustomed to. On the back panel, it's got an AC outlet. It's got a, a, a AB switch ground uh, switch. Now my particular amp has the three prong uh, plug on it so I don't really use that. Um, it's the, the back panel also has a two amp fuse. It's got a speaker jack and an extension speaker jack. And it's got a line out with a level adjust. And then it's got the jack for the, uh, the foot switch, the channel switching and the reverb. You can switch those all with the foot switch, which I happen to have. And, and from what I can tell, that's, a, that's even rarer than the amp itself. Um, as far as the tube complement goes, it's got two 6L6s. These are minor 6L6 GCs. 
which give you the you know nice headroom that we're accustomed to for American style amplifiers. And it's got 7025s for on the normal and the reverb uh, channel for preamp. And lastly, I'll say that the fact that the cabinet is 24 inch wide by about 18 inches tall by about nine inches deep, and it's got those two speakers in it, my two tens, makes it heavy. It's 41 pounds heavy. Now, it's not as heavy as the Mesa Boogie I used to own. The Mesa Boogie I used to own was twice that. And, but it is still heavy. Um, I will say that, that this particular amp with that channel switch, switching and the, the onboard overdrive um, is very reminiscent of the early 80s Mesa Boogie amplifiers. And I would say that Fender created this as competition to, to take some of that market from Boogie. Um, did they do a good job of it? Well, all that's subjective. I kind of like it. It's not as it's not as good as the boogie I used to own, but it is still pretty usable, and uh, I think it's kind of neat. Although I normally, since I play pedals, I usually use the the normal channel predominantly, so I can use it as a nice big overhead for a nice palette for my pedals. Um, I will say that, like I said, this is a pre rivera amp. It was designed by Ed Johns, as best I can tell. Um, but it is often confused. You see it on the, on the web, they'll say this is a Rivera amp. It's not. It's earlier than that. But it's all point-to-point -point hand wired, like I said, which makes it attractive. I think the value of it can only go up from here. But it's definitely not one of the Silver Face Deluxes or Vibraluxes or the Black Face, you know, early 60s. It's not one of those. It's later than that. But it's still a pretty interesting amplifier, and I'm going to show it to you right now. All right, so start doing some uh, some sound for you. I had to get the camera close so that you could see everything. So I just wanted to put this in the field of view and say I'm playing a uh, Paul Reed Smith Swamp Ash Special guitar, and you can see here it's got a single coil uh, Seymour Duncan vintage rails pickup in the middle, and the standard humbucker pickups on the bridge and neck. Um, that's what I'm using to play into it. There are no pedals other than the, uh, the foot switch that comes with it. So I'll be switching that around a little bit just to demonstrate it. What I've done first is I've, I've set it for um, high gain. So I can back away from there. I'll show you what I got here. Um, so on the uh, reverb channel, I got the preamp gain set all the way up, the treble up about eight, and it's pulled out it's both the preamp gain and the treble are pulled out as well as the mid boost which is at 10 and the uh, base is rolled off because it's kind of muddy but I've got it pulled for fat anyway so all the pull outs are pulled out and I've got it set for high gain so you'll be able to hear what we got there doing that and I'll show you a little bit of single note stuff and then a couple of chord things and we'll hear it so here we go <laughs>
idea. Now we just kick that off. Now I've got the foot switch on now. You can see the, the red light here on the reverb channel. If I hit the foot switch, it pops over here and you'll notice there's an annoying little pop there. I don't know if that's because of the age of the amp or if it's normal, but that's what you hear in this particular amp. But So, so you may not want to switch it during the middle of a song unless it's on a percussive beat or something like that. But anyway, when you change it, now you hear... So you can see on this guy over here, now I've got it over on the normal channel, you can see it lit up, and the settings on it are um, the volume is at about 2, and the uh, treble is about 6, and the bass is down about 3. I've got it set there, and the bright switch is on. Now there's a big difference from what I can tell in the bright switch being on and the bright switch being off, and I'll, hear, I'll let you hear that. So. There it is with the bright switch on. Now here's the same thing. switch really to get that chimey fender chime you, know, you need to have that on so I really dig that um, so you can see it switches back and forth between the two channels with the foot switch um, now if we want to check out the reverb so I'm going to check out the reverb by pushing all these back in bring this back down to a reasonable level bring the vol master volume up a little bit uh, pull the middle mid down a little bit, somewhere in the middle, give us a little bottom, kind of mid-range in the three-band EQ. And now you can hear, and now I'll turn on the reverb, all the way up, as I mentioned, all the way up, it's nice and lush. Not overly, not overbearing, but it's up there. And now you hear. And I like it to have just a little bit of atmosphere, so I'll bring it down a little bit more, just a, just a wee bit. So yeah, you can hear how that how that works, and that gives it some nice reverb. And now you can. One of the things you can also do, you can turn off the channel switching, and now you see both lights are on. And what that means is whichever one you plug into is the one that, is the one that you get sound out of. So let me, to illustrate the point, if you turn it back on, see this one's off, and you can hear it in the reverb channel, but if you come over here and plug into the normal channel, what do you think you'll get? Nothing. Nothing. So, oh, there's my reverb. If I put this in here, and I turn the channel switching off, again, that annoying pop, hear the reverb? Now if I push it over here, now, Push the bottom up a little bit. So, yeah, and then you can take and unplug it here and put it in here. So, in a nutshell, 
It's a pretty versatile amp. Gives you the really nice clean stuff you want if you use the normal channel. And you can also clean it up here. I find that the this side is even if you clean it up has a little bit more mid-range than this one does. I think it's because you only have two bands of EQ here and you have three here. Um, so they do sound different even if you clean them up. And of course, on this side you get the reverb, on this side you do not. Um, so it really is a nice amp. It, as I said, it's kind of heavy. But uh, if you can stand hauling around 41 pounds, uh, you might dig it. Um, I really like it. It's, it's got lots of different stuff that I can use. So um, I hope this has been helpful for you. And uh, I'll leave you with a little bit of a kind of a funk tune here. I'm going to put this back over. Eh, we'll leave it here. We'll leave it here. How about that?